Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink with a video using one of the Honeybee Stamps Lovely Layers set. This was one of the newer ones. This is the Lovely Layers Pansy wafer die set. I will have a link to yet another playlist at the end of this video that I compiled of all the videos I've done so far using various Lovely Layers sets from Honeybee because they've done a ton over the last however many years. And this one had come out and everyone was betting that this was going to be the first one I used. I did the strawberry set. Uh, that was like last month. And I'll have a link to that one um, at the end of this video as well. And then I had the pansy set, of course. It's been sitting here just just waiting, just waiting. And I was like, now it's, it's time. It's time to die cut it and, you know, add some color. Uh, in that playlist I link, I show all sorts of ways to do these. I have done like sprays and oxides and just all different sorts of methods to color these pieces. And you can also just die cut them from like solid colors of cardstock. I wanted to do ink blending this time. So I die cut everything twice. Generally, all you need to do is die cut with one of these sets is you just die cut everything once and you've got all the pieces you need to assemble. I did everything twice because I wanted a couple of these big pansies couple extra leaves, etc. And I used Hammer Mills Smooth White cardstock for the die cutting. Any smooth white cardstock is going to work. I just happen to have a ton of this stuff, <laughs> even though I, I know right now I think it's still kind of hard for people to get their hands on because us crafters go a little nutty when uh, something becomes popular because uh, this is the stuff everyone loves for foiling. It is great for foiling too. I just like it with when, when I have to layer a bunch of pieces together, it's nice because it's quite thin. I might actually have to start getting thinner cardstock. I'm a big proponent of like, I really like the heavyweight cardstock, you know, the 110 pound, like the heavyweight stuff. It's great. It looks better. It die cuts beautifully, you know, and you just you get in and they're great for card bases, etc. But now that we're getting all these awesome, like layering die sets, I was like, you know, I kind of wish I had, you know, had a good stash of like the 65 pound weight cardstock is quite thin. That's perfect though for layers. Ideas. Anyway. I'll get to it down the road. So ink blending, really simple. This always looks like a hot mess. <laughs> the beautiful thing with the lovely layers die sets is one, they layer so easily on it. Cause if I can do it, anyone can. One, they now, they include graphics. If you have any of the older sets, you can go on their website. They'll have like layering graphics that you can just download and print, but it's all, you know, shown in the fabulous little graphics. And then it's also just obvious when you're looking at them like after you've die cut them because there's a bunch of detail that gets impressed into each die cut and so you can tell which parts are going to show up because those are the parts with detail all the parts that get covered by the next layer there's nothing there so that's where I don't worry about my blending you know I started with my lightest color and I'm using all of Simon's positively saturated inks for this and my lightest color was uh bubble gum so that I just kind of went around with a blending brush and then I'm going in with like sweets, which is the medium color. And that's where you see, I'm just not worried about it because those like center blotch areas, those are getting covered up. Don't have to worry about it. I only have to worry about the areas that people are actually going to see once I add, um, once I layer everything up together. And then for my darkest color, taffy, instead of using my regular size blending brushes, I'm using one of the waffle flower. Uh, this is the shader one size. I've shown these in a bunch of videos. I love I love my little waffle flower brushes. These are great for just getting into little areas. These aren't the tiniest ones. These are the like medium sized ones. There's little tiny, tiny ones that I use a lot. There's these ones. And then there's um, these angled thin ones that I'll get to in a second. And the waffle flower brushes are a little different in the sense that they're actually angled. Like the bristles are angled themselves. So they're not meant for like the swirling motion that we're all used to. These you just kind of drag. And for things like this, they're perfect. So I went in with the taffy ink and added my darkest little areas. And this also picks up a lot of the, the impressed detail that was embossed into the cardstock and just kind of emphasizes it a bit. So I just went along with each layer and wherever those um, embossed line details were, I added that deepest ink. And again, and if I wasn't 100% sure, I would stick the next layer on top of the piece I was blending just to make sure it's like, okay, this is the spot that's exposed, add a little bit of ink, we're good to go. So then I took one of the 
This is called the Shader 2 brush. And I keep the, them in these little waffle flower uh, silicone containers. And I'll link to these too because I love these. These also have their, their little containers, FYI, fit in those pitcher ledge um, shelves from Ikea. That another thing all of us crafters love because they're perfect for storing all supplies. Those fit perfectly on there, FYI. So I have those to store like my blender brushes and my glues and all kinds of things. So anyway, back to the brushes. I'm using the shader two brush. So this has got, it's like flat and narrow and a little bit of an angle. And all I'm doing is following the lines that are embossed onto the die cuts. So I'm not inventing nothing. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just following the lines. I can figure all this stuff. Like I talk about this a lot about, you know, like light sources and adding highlights and all this and how I just, I kind of sound like I don't care. And in a sense, I don't. <laughs> But my thing is, I can do all this. I know all of this. I just, I like to enjoy what I'm doing. I don't like to sit and really like worry about it too much. One, it's all overrated. Two, I just, I just want to have fun. So die sets like this that impress all the detail. And you can see there, I was just comparing, just like showing what a difference it makes that are, so die sets like this that have, you know, the detail already, you know, given it, it's just all the little guides are there for me. So I just have to follow along. You know, I look all artsy fartsy and like, I'm like super amazing, but I'm just following what was already done for me. <laughs> but, and another tip, another tip, Dawn, Wolfslagel. I probably just butchered her last name. That's why I muttered it because I can never pronounce people's names. But Dawn plus nine. She designs for, for Honeybee now. She has her own like brand and everything. I highly recommend like go check out her videos. If I remember, I'll post a link below mine. She has done many showing like and specifically showing the Honeybee Lovely Layer sets and how she will add like shading and detail with brushes, so, like just ink blending. And it's just... Oh man, I can just sit and watch her create all day. It's inspiring. But that's actually what got me thinking with this set. I was like, ooh, I'm going to be like Dawn, you know, but more a more ratchet version. <laughs> it's not as fancy or as artistic, but she gives a lot of amazing, like real artistic tips. She has an eye for design, all the things. So just, I highly recommend if you aren't already following her, go right now or after watching this video, then go over there, check her stuff out, subscribe. Um, cause yeah, she just, oh, she adds shading in ways that just makes everything like pop. It's fabulous. So anyhow, I just, like I said, I just followed along, you know, scribbling on the ink, basically dragging it on, following along the little, um, embossed lines and whatnot. And then for the little tiny centers, I used a couple shades of brown and a shade of yellow, pushed all that aside. For the, for the leaves, I'm using another favorite combo of mine, this positively saturated ink trio of Sprout, Fairway, and Field. And I happen to have like some random green on my blending brush on the very first leaf. Went with it. You know, nothing is consistent in nature. Doesn't need to be on our cards either. I'm not worried about it. And besides the fact, when it's all said and done, you're not even going to be able to tell which leaf was just a slight different shade of green at the very beginning. So I did the same thing. I went lightest, took the medium color, which was the lightest was Sprout, the medium is Fairway. And then the field, I started with the Waffle Flower uh, Shader 1 brush. And then I pulled out the Shader 2 brush, the thin one. And that's where you can see. And again, I'm just following the embossed lines. And it just gives it like look at all that depth and dimension and this is easy if I can do this anybody can do this seriously <laughs> so that's all I did it was like oh because you, you probably can't see it really in the video but in real life you can see all the fabulous detail that these wafer dyes emboss and they're all just there so you can do something like this in ink blend or you know you could color them with markers and then use the emboss detail to guide you to add you know different areas etc like the sky is the limit or if you're just die cutting with straight up color cardstock the cool thing is is they already get that little extra detail by having um all of that embossed into it which when i did i think it was the strawberry one that i did that i'll have a link at the end i think i just used color cardstock for that and i didn't do any like shading nothing and they still looked great so Love it. So once I was done all that ink blending, I'm going to assemble these. And again, simple. One, the guide is right there, but also legit. They just work. 
Like, that's the one thing I loved so much. I remember when they, f- I forget what the very first set was, but I remember kind of feeling very overwhelmed because it's like you have all these die cut pieces. And I was like, ah. and I've said this a million times since you're largest to smallest. That's basically all you need to do. Like, it just works. Everything lines up and you just can tell even without looking at a guide. It's like, oh, yeah, you can see this little curve on the end. This fits that curve on the other piece. And it's like, doop, 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 done. So I did the little buds. Those are just two pieces and then the little stem portion, simple. And then the big individual pansy, literally largest to smallest, super duper simple. And everything always looks like a hot mess. Like all this blending I did, it's like, I just, eh. but once you layer it, it covers up all the icky parts <laughs> that I left and all the little curved edges, everything just fits. So that's where here I was like, what? Mm-mm. And then I was like, oh, there we go. Perfect. So. I adhered everything together with craft tacky glue. If you really want to get fancy, you could add like little foam squares, things like that to bump it up. And that really does um, add amazing dimension. I don't do that very often just because then it would make my card like three inches thick and it just makes it a little more difficult to mail, you know, but if you're hand delivering it or if you're including it in like a gift that you're mailing, etc., cetera, uh, totally sky's the limit with dimension because it's so much fun <laughs> but at the same time you don't have to they look beautiful regardless so i got everything assembled set it all aside i could not find i have a mini mr mr bottle i've shown in like videos forever ago it has been a long time that i had water and perfect pearls mixed in and i used to use it more for splatter than actually spraying anything but me it growing legs and walking away is fine i have extra mini mr bottle so this is a mini mr bottle uh by ranger I just put uh, some distilled water in it and for like a little three quarters ish fold. There's no formula for this. So you just kind of play with it, but put water in it. And then I'm adding perfect pearl powder in the color perfect pearl because you can use any color of perfect pearl powder. Again, I specify perfect pearl power powder by Ranger. Other shimmer powders, etc. cetera, um, specifically like Pearl X. I can't comment on whether or not those work. I know Pearl X does not have a binder in it. Perfect Pearl Powder does. So when you add it to something like this, like just water, it's not going to rub off. Now, if you're having an issue with your Perfect Pearl Powder rubbing off your projects, one, either you had, didn't use enough water with it or you used way too much powder, whatever. That's because this did not come off. So I shook it up really well in the mini mister. I sprayed a pan, another panel of just hammer mill cardstock because it was sitting there. And th- this has a dual purpose. One, it's going to add all this beautiful shimmer. And two, it adds a bit of moisture to the cardstock. So it's going to emboss beautifully. So I'm running it through my uh, Platinum 6 die cut machine with the new universal plate system. You use the base plate and the D plate and the folder with the cardstock. And this folder is the Clover Petals 3D embossing folder from Honeybee. And look at it. Look how beautiful it is. <laughs> Seriously, Honeybee's new folders are just, again, chef's kiss. And I will show even better at the end too, uh, the, the flashlight. Like the shimmer is not overwhelming because one, I didn't hose down the cardstock, but it's just, it's there and it's pretty. So I set that aside to dry. My card base is a top folding A2 white note card. And I stamped a sentiment from the best of everything stamp set with that taffy ink the darkest pinky color and then I adhered one of the little pansy uh, buds to the inside because I only wanted one for the outside so I just adhered that to the inside and then my embossed panel I'm going to I was going to cut it down and then I was like nope I like it I like it too much it's just it's not getting trimmed down <laughs> it's going to cover the whole card so I put craft tacky glue on the back of it and that ju- and that especially craft tacky glue gives me you know that wiggle room that I always need to get things lined up, you know? So got that on to the card base and it completely covers the card base. And again, my hands were all over this and I checked nothing rub- rubs off. So just, yeah, if you're using way too much, the, a cardstock can only absorb so much. So if you, you're finding powders everywhere, you're just, you're just using way too much. So anyway, after I've got everything adhered, I'm then going to start adhering all of my die cut pieces, my leaves, etc. And same thing, just craft tacky glue to adhere all this. You could pop things up with foam tape, all of the things, whatever floats your boat. So I just 
figured out kind of this is kind of like my go-to layout when I'm doing florals on cards I don't know it's just it works kind of like a c shape almost you know or an l an l or a c shape is just kind of my go-to for these sort of arrangements so I adhered everything and then I'd stuck it under my misty just something to hold it down and then the sentiment I actually showed in the strawberry video so I'll link to that at the end I showed the actual like hot foiling with this and in that video, I hot foiled extras because I was like, why not when I've got everything going, which was exactly perfect because when I pulled out the package, I was like, ooh, I've already got sentiments hot foiled, saves me time. So that's what I did. I just used this big hugs hot foil sentiment. This is from the Love Hot Foil Plate and Wafer Die Set from Honeybee. And I just adhered it with a bit of craft tacky glue and a couple little foam squares. And then as a final bit of embellishment, I pulled out, these are pink fresh blossom glitter drops. Again, I have like 15, I, I, I'm, what did I say before? Like three lifetimes and now I'm saying, I'm probably, yeah, probably it's 15 lifetime supplies of bling. Um, I purchased all the pink fresh glitter ones because they had so many beautiful colors <laughs> and I just keep them in a container and I hop through them. I would, and yeah, I've shown them in a couple videos. I just more honestly, even with my bajillion lifetimes of bling. More often than not, it's like, oh, it's not quite the right color I need, you know, but this one worked. This color went perfectly with these little, with these pansies. So I got shimmer on the background. I got some glitter, you know, glitter rhinestones, hot foil sentiment, and then these pansies that when you see the photos at the end, they're kind of like going to punch you in the face because uh, my photos just made them look neon. Again, I struggle with taking photos. I, I don't know. I don't know, man, but regardless, they're beautiful. This is such a fun die set all the fun things. As always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. I will have a supply list with all the supplies I use. So you can check that out below if you're interested. And then I'll have links to the other videos mentioned here at the end. Thank you all so very much for watching, thumbs upping, commenting, subscribing, all the good things. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.